Hi there, in the previous video, I explained BitLogic instructions. In this video, we're going to learn timer instructions which are, timer on delay, timer off delay, retentive timer on, and reset instruction. Finally, we'll use timer instructions to extend the sorting box project, which has been done in the previous video. My name is Syed Reza, and before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content I have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI and microcontroller based developments. If you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell to receive the latest and the greatest content I will be posting through the channel. Well, here are timer instructions. Timers are used to turn outputs on and off after a time delay, turn outputs on or off for a set amount of timer, and keep track of the time an output is on or off. Let's start with on delay timer. This timer is a non-retentive output instruction, used when the application requires an action to occur, at some time after the run conditions for the timer become true. When we want to use a timer, we must create a tag of type timer, and enter the preset and the accumulated value. The tag must be defined, before the preset and the accumulated value can be entered. So, let me right click on this tag and select new. As you know, here I can change my tag properties. Its data type is timer. Here, I select where the new tag must be created. Let's use default properties. Well, the tag has been created. If you remember, the timer address in ArsLogix 500 software is a data table address or symbol, whereas the timer address in ArsLogix 5000 software is a predefined structure of the timer data type, but their parameters and status bit are similar to each other. The first parameter is preset value, which its type is double integer. So, this parameter uses 32 bits to store a desired time. Note that, the time is stored in milliseconds. The accumulated value shows the current time, if the timer has been activated. Otherwise it will be zero. The enable bit, EN, which its type is boolean, indicates the timer instruction is enabled. This bit is true or one, when the rung input logic, before the inserted timer, is true, and false when the rung input logic is false. The timer timing bit, TT, indicates that a timing operation is in process. This bit is true only when the accumulator is incrementing, it remains true until the accumulator reaches the preset value, or the timer is disabled. The done bit, DN, indicates that accumulated value is equal to the preset value. The done bit signals the end of the timing process by changing states from false to true, for the inserted on delay timer. This diagram shows how the on delay timer works. When the rung input logic is true, the enable bit is true too. The timer starts its work, so the timer timing bit is true, and the accumulated value start incrementing based on milliseconds. When its value reaches the preset value. The timer done bit will change from 0 to 1. Note that, the time must be entered in milliseconds, as you know, 10 seconds is equivalent to 10,000 milliseconds. Well, let's enter 10,000 milliseconds as the preset value. Normally 0 will be entered for the accumulator value. If I enter another time, when the program is downloaded, this value will be in the timer for the first scan cycle. Note that, if the, the timer is not enabled for the first scan cycle, the accumulator value will be set back to zero. Let me use the inserted on delay timer, to turn on an output after 10 seconds. Here, I use the timer done bit, to turn on an output after 10 seconds. Let's verify the program. Well, 
here is an error. I've forgotten to create this tag. Well, let's verify again. As you see, there isn't any error. Let's download the program to my virtual processor. To download the program, I must change my virtual processor mode, to program mode. Now, let's back to run mode. As you can see, if I activate this contact, base on the program, the output will be on after 10 seconds. Now, let me show you another use of the inserted timer. First, instead of this contact, let me use a normally close contact, which uses the timer done bit. The first run cause restart timer after 10 seconds, automatically. As you know, the accumulated value is incrementing, when the timer is activated. This address uses 32 bits, to store its value. I want to use a bit of this address, to turn on and off the output. Let's download the program to see its performance. As you see, the timer is activated, and after 10 seconds, it will be restart automatically. In the second rung, I have a flasher contact, which make to have a flasher output. This output can be used to have flashing red or yellow traffic lights. Note that, I have used the bit number 10 of the timer accumulator address. I can use another bit of this address, to have a faster or slower flasher light. Alright, let's see how an off delay, and a retentive timer work. We have seen, how an on delay timer is used to turn on an output after a delay. The off delay timer operates in a fashion opposite to the on delay timer, the done bit of this timer will turn on immediately, when its rung is true, but it will delay before turning off, after the rung goes false. A retentive on delay timer operate the same as an on delay timer, Except that the retentive timer remembers its accumulator value even if the rung goes false, the processor is placed in the false or program mode, or power to processor is temporarily interrupted and the processor battery is functioning properly. For example, in this diagram, in the next activation, the accumulator will start from 4 seconds, and the timer will need 6 seconds to reach the preset value. Note that, the done bit remains on, until the retentive timer is reset by a reset instruction. Here is the reset instruction, which can be used to reset any type of timers, and also counters, which will be told in the next video. It only needs determined timer or counter name for that. Try to test it. Now, let's do a simple project using factory I.O. software. If you remember we did the sorting box project in the previous video. Now, I want to modify it using timers. In this project, if I press the start push button, first the siren alarm should be activate for 5 seconds, after that, the belt conveyor and this warning light will be started. Also, if I press the stop push button, the belt conveyor must be stopped after 10 seconds, to move all boxes which are on the belt conveyor. Well. This the PLC program which has been written in the previous video. Also, I have configured my hardware here, under I.O. configuration. Now, let me insert an on delay timer, and use its done bit to turn on the belt conveyor after 5 seconds.
Similarly, let me insert an off delay timer, and use its done bit, to turn off the belt conveyor after 10 seconds. Alright, in another rung, I want to use a contact of the belt conveyor, to turn on the warning light. As you see, I can easily change the sorting box logic, without changing in my equipment wiring. Only I will need to connect two new devices, the warning light and the alarm siren, to my PLC outputs. Well, in this project we need two new digital outputs. I will connect this digital output and the next one, to a warning light and a warning siren in factory I.O. software. Now, based on the last rung, when the belt conveyor is on, the warning light will be on too. Similarly, let me insert another rung, to turn on the warning siren. Here, for this contact, I use the timer timing bit of the first inserted timer. Because this bit will be on for 5 seconds before the belt conveyor starts its work. Now, let me compile and download this program to my controller. Alright, let's go to factory I.O. and use these two digital output addresses. We have designed this plant, in the previous video. Now, let me insert a warning light, and also an alarm siren, from the right list. Now, let me click on driver, under file menu. As you know, here I must select my controller type. In the configuration window, here, I must write my controller IP address. Here, I specify its slot number. Also, I must determine tags, which are used in the PLC program and must be connected to inserted equipment in factory I.O. software. Let me don't change these settings, which were entered in the previous video. Now. Let me connect factory I.O. software to my controller. I only need to connect the inserted warning light, and also the alarm siren to these digital outputs of my controller. Alright, let's see how my PLC program, control this plant. First, I must change my controller mode to run mode. Based on my controller program, I must press and hold the start push button 5 seconds, to start the belt conveyor. Now, if I press the stop push button, the belt conveyor must be stopped after 10 seconds, but is stopped immediately. Probably I need to modify the PLC program. See this part of my program. 
When I press and then release the stop push button, the timer done bit will be on for 10 seconds. It makes to turn off the belt conveyor immediately. Because, I have used unlatch instruction. To solve this problem, I can use a one shot falling instruction, to detect the moment, when the done bit changes from 1 to 0 after 10 seconds. Now, let me download this program, and test it using factory I.O. software. Now, if I press the stop push button, the belt conveyor will be stopped after 10 seconds. We have reached the end of this video. In the next video, we'll learn counter instructions. Thanks for watching my content, if you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.